Welcome to the Kindred Church Podcast, where we talk about God, faith, and real life. This is Daniel Childs. I'm the host of the podcast and the pastor of Kindred Church. To learn more about how to connect with our community, check out our website at www.kindrednc.church. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We're glad you've tuned in for today's episode. Now, let's talk about God. One evening, uh, a few weeks ago, my wife, Kirsten, and I were in our kitchen making dinner, and uh, we noticed something weird was going on outside. We could see through our front window that all of these cars had pulled up, and they started just parking along the curb, along the street that, that runs out in front of our house. And uh, over the course of about 30 minutes, more and more cars kept pulling up and, and parking. And part of the weird thing was um, people were in the cars, but no one was getting out. They weren't going anywhere. People were just sitting in their cars. And after about 30 minutes, uh, this big SUV pulls up and it is just filled with all these hot pink balloons. And this guy hops out and he starts going around uh, distributing, passing out all these hot pink balloons to the people who were just sitting in their cars out on the street in front of our house. Well, finally we figured out what was going on. Uh, it turns out that there's this little girl who lives around the corner from us and she was having a birthday. And because of social distancing, she wasn't able to have a, a birthday celebration like I'm sure she had hoped for. And so instead, all of these friends and family and neighbors, they had come together to throw this little girl a, a birthday parade. And uh, we actually got to watch as the, the parents brought this little girl out into her front yard and, and uh, the, the cars drove by in a processional and they were honking and waving and releasing their balloons and singing happy birthday at the top of their lungs. Uh, it was a beautiful example of this, this community that wanted to be together to, to celebrate and couldn't and, and they got creative and, and found a way to be together anyway. Uh, I think that's one thing that we've seen on full display over the last couple of months, that we human beings have this relentless drive uh, to be together, to, to connect with one another. And when we can't be together in our usual ways, doing our usual things, we don't give up, but we, we get creative and, and we find ways to be together even if we have to be apart at the same time. I know uh, our family has made a habit of, of taking evening walks at the end of the day during all of this social distancing to stretch our legs and get some sunshine. And uh, one of the things I've noticed is, is how many of our neighbors are having gatherings with other neighbors and, and friends, like social distance kind of gatherings where they'll, they'll sit out in their driveway or they'll sit in the, the front yard at a, at a distance, but they're out there in the heat and the humidity and they're sitting in these uncomfortable lawn chairs. And in some cases they're getting sunburned or, or eaten alive by mosquitoes and they're doing it all so that they can be together. We humans are very relational creatures. We have this drive to, to connect, to get together, to be with each other. Well, for us as Christians, as we reflect on that, that drive and that, that relationality, uh, we see something of the, the reflection of the image of God that is within us. Uh, this actually points to something that we believe is, is at the very heart of who God is. Uh, and so that's what I want us to talk about for a little bit this morning. Uh, this idea that God is social, that God is personal, that God is relational. Uh, that is foundational not only to our faith, but it's also foundational to our mission here at Kindred Church. As we are kicking off uh, weekly worship services, we're starting with a, a sermon series where we're going to explore the core values of Kindred Church. Uh, what are those things, those distinctive things that we want to shape our mission? What are those distinctive things that we want to, to shape uh, our, our community? And what are the, some, of, some of the ways that you can join with our church family in this mission? My hope is that whether you're brand new to Kindred or whether you've been with us uh, from the, the very beginning, that all of us are going to learn some new things about God. And all of us are going to be able to think more deeply about the call that God has placed on our lives uh, as individuals and, and collectively together as a community. Uh, and on this day that we call Trinity Sunday, the first core value that we're going to explore together is that at Kindred, uh, we are fundamentally relational. We are fundamentally relational. Now, you hear me say that, you may think, well, Daniel, doesn't every church say that it's relational? Doesn't every church say that it's the friendliest church around, the most welcoming church uh, around? Well, when we say that we're fundamentally relational, we're not just saying that, that we try to be welcoming and, and friendly, though we certainly do. Um, but for us, it goes deeper than that, uh, because for us, being relational is actually about reflecting our understanding 
of who God is. It's, it's about God's ultimate desire for each and every one of us. Uh, for those of you that have been a part of a, a church in the past, um, I wonder how that church thought about God's ultimate desire for us. Uh, you know, for some churches, it, it all comes down to morality, that God's ultimate desire for us is that we, we follow God's rules. And that means behaving in a certain kind of way. Uh, maybe in some churches it means voting in a certain kind of way or having romantic relationships in a certain kind of way or, or not. Some Christians give the impression that, that the Christian faith comes down to a certain kind of rule following. Uh, in other churches, it, it all comes down to a, a personal decision. You know, this idea that God's ultimate desire for us is that at some point in our lives, we make this conscious, intentional decision to dedicate our lives to Jesus. And I know some of you may be coming from church backgrounds where the, the climax of every single worship service is this dramatic altar call. Uh, some of you may have memories of, of going forward at a service and, and getting saved, whether at church or maybe at summer camp or at a revival at some point. For still other churches, uh, it's a little more intellectual, right? It all comes down to belief in certain doctrines, that God's ultimate desire is that we accept certain ideas as true, whether that's the resurrection of Jesus or the virgin birth of Jesus. In some churches, it might be that uh, every word of the Bible is true on a literal level, that God's desire ultimately is that we accept these ideas. Well, here at Kindred, um, as we think about these different perspectives, we see a lot of truth in these different perspectives, for sure. I mean, absolutely, uh, God cares how we live our lives. And absolutely, God wants us to be intentional about responding to God's love. And, and of course, it matters a whole lot what we believe about God and what we believe about the Bible. Uh, and yet, at, at Kindred, um, we say that none of these quite gets to the very heart of who God is. And none of these quite names God's ultimate desire for us. So I want to spend a few minutes with you exploring this passage in Matthew chapter 28 that Manoka read for us uh, a minute ago. Because I think this is a passage that can help us to, to see uh, what is at the heart of who God is. And what is God's ultimate desire for us? Well, as this story begins... Um, we find this, this little group of uh, Jewish, rural, first century peasants. And this little group of, of people is uh, gathered together out in a remote place, away from the towns and, and villages that were nearby. They're actually up on the top of this very big hill. And I don't know if you've ever had the experience of, uh, like you're at an airport and you see people getting off of a, a very long flight, like a 12 hour flight, and as they emerge from the plane, they're kind of in this state between waking and sleeping. And as they're stumbling to baggage claim, you get the impression that they're not really sure if, if all of this is actually just a, a dream. Um, well, I think if we could see this group of first century people that Matthew is telling us about, they would look a bit like they just got off a 12 hour flight. Um, because what we know is that they are physically exhausted in this moment and they're emotionally drained and they've just had their whole world shattered to pieces. And they're not even sure where to begin picking up the pieces. Uh, this little group of first century Jewish rural peasants is, of course, uh, Jesus' very first disciples, his, his very first followers. And uh, over the previous seven days, the context here is that these folks have seen that their leader, Jesus, is not at all who they thought he was. Um, they've watched him be tortured to death in a humiliating fashion, and they've watched this from a distance because all these folks had abandoned Jesus in his hour of greatest need. And then they got a report a few days later that he was back from the dead. And now they've just finished this three-day journey on foot to this particular hill because this is where, for some reason, Jesus said he wanted to meet them. Well, sure enough, uh, as the disciples are laying around, waiting, wondering what the heck is going on, uh, suddenly the risen Jesus shows up. Uh, and in this moment, some of the disciples are uh, so excited to see Jesus, they fall on their faces and they just immediately start worshiping him. And other disciples have a different reaction. They're more skeptical. You know, they think well, it hasn't been but just a few days we saw this guy die and now he's standing in front of us. They don't really believe their eyes. They, they doubt. Um, and here's where it gets interesting. Uh, because, as it turns out, the way that Matthew tells us this story, uh, this interaction that we're getting ready to witness between Jesus and his disciples here, uh, this is going to be actually the very last interaction that Jesus has with the disciples before he ascends back into heaven. 
Uh, so this is a climactic scene. This is a, a climactic interaction that we're about to witness. And Matthew says that after Jesus uh, appears, the first thing that he does is he comes near. He comes near to the disciples. He gets close to them, both the ones who are worshiping him and the ones who were doubting and, and more skeptical. He comes to be right there with them. And then Jesus starts giving them an assignment. He gives them some work to do. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And with that authority, he commissions them. He says, uh, you're now the church, disciples. Go, go into the world. Go and baptize people. Go in and teach people. And as he's giving them these instructions, Jesus says something here I don't want us to miss. Because Jesus mentions something that gives us a very glimpse, uh, a glimpse at the very heart of who God is. And I think this, this speaks to God's ultimate desire for us. As Jesus is telling his disciples to go and baptize people, uh, he says to them specifically, baptize people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Baptize people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Well, what Jesus is doing here is uh, he's making reference to this peculiar belief that we have as Christians about God. And we believe this about God because Jesus taught it to us that the one God that we worship is in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, now, there's a whole lot that we could say on this Trinity Sunday about the Trinity, uh, but I'm, mind, I'm mindful of the fact my wife likes to remind me that um, uh, when I get to talking about the Trinity, oftentimes her eyes will glaze over and she starts thinking about something else. Um, but hang with me for just one second, because here's what we need to see for today. Because God is Trinity, what that means is that God is fundamentally relational. It means that before the world ever existed, there was this eternal relationship of love going on between the Father and the Son and the Spirit. And after the world ends, there will continue to be this relationship of love between the Father and the Son and the Spirit. That's who God is. And as Christians, when we say that, that God is love, uh, that's what we mean. You know, it's interesting, um, down through the, the church's history, different theologians have imagined the Trinity in, in different ways and, and with different metaphors. Some theologians have imagined the Trinity as this perpetual dance that goes on, this eternal dance of the Father and the Son and the Spirit dancing around each other, enjoying one another's company. Uh, personally, I am like the world's worst dancer, and so uh, that metaphor doesn't really resonate with me. It kind of makes me a little nervous. Uh, but other theologians have imagined the Trinity as uh, almost like a divine dinner party where the Father and the Son and the Spirit are sitting around a table enjoying fellowship, enjoying each other's company over a, a great meal or maybe some, some great beverages. Uh, I like to eat, so that metaphor resonates more with me. Uh, but however we think about the Trinity, uh, that belief tells us that at the very heart of who God is, at the very core of God's being, is an eternal, loving relationship. Uh, and as Christians, we believe that Jesus came into this world to call us, to invite you, to invite me, to make a way for us to participate in that divine relationship. And so, in other words, God's ultimate desire, God's ultimate desire is to be with us, to be with us now and to be with us forever. Uh, if there's any doubt about all of that, uh, just look at Jesus' very last words to his disciples here. Uh, his very last words that he leaves them with are, he says, look, I am with you every day until the end of this present age. That, that come hell or high water, no matter what, I'm going to be with you. And all of this shows us that no matter what else we say about God and who God is, and no matter what else we say about the desires that God has for us, all of it has to be rooted ultimately in the fact that God is relational and that God is determined to be in relationship with us. So at Kindred, uh, when we say that one of our core values is that we are fundamentally relational, that this is what we mean, that, that we want everything that we do, everything, our worship, our small groups, our mission projects, the ways that we serve together in the world, we want all of it to guide us into more enduring, richer, deeper relationships, the kind of relationships that God wants to share with us and the kind that he calls us to share with other people in the world. You know, in, in John's gospel, he tells this story of Jesus where Jesus is hanging out with his disciples. 
and uh, he, he pulls them all together to, to tell them something. He says, this is important. And, and he says, um, you guys aren't just my disciples, though, though you are that. And you're not just my followers, though you are that too. Um, but he says, I'm calling you friends. Jesus says to his disciples, I'm calling you my friends. Well, here at Kindred, we want everything we do to help us grow in our friendship with God. And we know that that's going to shape and, and reshape the friendships and the relationships that we share with other people around us as well. So as we're reflecting on all of this, I want to give you a few questions to be thinking about this week. What would it look like for you, I wonder? What would it look like for you to embrace friendship with God, or maybe more fully embrace friendship with God? What would it look like for you to be uh, intentional about responding to this God who is bound and determined to be with you? And I wonder what difference that would make in your life. I wonder what difference it would make in your relationships, in your approach to your career. I wonder what difference it would make in the ways that you spend your money or, or the ways that you spend your time. Uh, here at Kindred, uh, we know that those are difficult questions. They're not easy questions to answer, but we're committed to asking these kinds of questions over and over again. And we're committed to, to coming alongside each other and helping each other to, to find the answers to these questions in the, the daily realities, the, the nitty gritty of our lives. Uh, and we're committed to being relational in everything that we do because of our belief in this relational Trinitarian God, this God who will stop at nothing to be with us. Now, for those of you who are already well-connected here at Kindred Church, we've got to always remember that for us in our community, this is what it all comes down to. This is what it's all about, ultimately, because this is the God that we proclaim. And for those of you who are new to Kindred, uh, we want you to, to keep coming back. Uh, we'd love for you to, to get more connected and, and to join us on this journey. Let us join you on your journey so that all of us together can grow in our friendship let me pray for us. O oh, triune God, O oh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are eternal and unending love. You are the love that moves the sun and the stars. You are the love that crafted each and every one of us with care. So God, help us to know your love. Help us to embrace this calling of friendship with you, God. We ask your blessing on our Kindred Church community as we're launching. God, guide us so that we would reflect who you are faithfully in everything that we do. We pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Kindred Church Podcast. If this episode was meaningful to you, consider sharing it with a friend who might also enjoy it. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast here and give us a rating that helps us connect with more listeners. This free resource and all of Kindred's ministries are supported by the generosity of people like you. Your giving changes lives, and it helps us to share and embody God's love. If you'd like to make a donation, you can do so on our website at www.kindrednc.church. Just select Give. You can find lots of ways to connect with our community on our website, as well as on our social media pages. Thanks again for listening, and we will catch you next time.